Offers a block. The blitz comes from the other side to Quell Jackson. And now again to Quell Jackson. You're listening to Believe in Colts with co-hosts Lawrence Owen and DeQuell Jackson, bringing you the latest and greatest about the shoe. Brady, middle, intercepted by DeQuell Jackson. Playfield, Ryan, intercepted, picked off at the five, touchdown DeQuell Jackson. And I am back with Believe in Colts. DeQuell Jackson won't be here today due to personal issues, but I have a very, very special guest with me. I have Christopher Price of the Boston Globe and the Patriots Report found on the Believe Podcast Network. Uh, you could find him on Twitter at C Price Globe on mm-hmm. Twitter. And hey, man, take a moment here and tell everybody a little bit about yourself and where they can find you. Uh, like you said, I'm on Twitter at C Price Globe. That's C Price Globe. You can also read my stuff at bostonglobe.com. Uh, or if you're lucky enough to get the newspaper, you're still one of the, you know, one of the old dinosaurs like me who still has a newspaper subscription. You could read my stuff in the paper from time to time. So you know what? You do a little bit of everything here. You a little podcasting, a little digital work, a little traditional journalism. So it, it's a good way to, to, to stay employed and stay informed, you know, and, and follow along with the Patriots because this game, and we talked a little bit about this, you know, before we came on the air here, this game has an opportunity to be one of the more compelling games of the year. Oh, I, I believe so. Um, most Colts fans look at this game as probably the most important game of the year for the Colts. I, it, it's not just the history between the the Colts and the Patriots, but the fact that, you know, the Patriots are the number one seed uh, in the AFC and the Colts are sitting there, you know, at a very tentative seven and six tied with five other teams for that those three wild card spots. So this is a very, very important game for the Colts. And of course, for the Patriots as well, because they're they're sitting there tied with, I think, three teams. Uh, mm-hmm. They just got a better conference record, which is what's keeping them on the top as well. So, you know, you're fighting for that first seed and that bye, which is is no new thing uh, for Patriots fans no, uh, sitting there with that. But my, I'm going to start this off real quick, uh, Christopher. Do we call you Christopher or Chris? Chris is perfect. Chris, Chris is perfect. Is perfect? Thank okay. You. All right, Chris. Well, after last year and the year before, you know, the last year with with uh Brady and 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 having a disappointing season with Brady, Brady leaves, you bring in uh Cam Newton and and had kind of a a, a tight wallet, let's say, for free agency and and things of that nature and you weren't able to go get guys to to help out. How surprised are you? And not just you, but other, you know, Patriots fans, Patriots media at where you're sitting currently uh, in in this AFC race. I think there was a belief that Mac had some potential and the free agent pickups would help them improve, you know, maybe get them from here to here. But I don't think anyone anticipated nine wins in the first 13 games. I, I also don't think anyone anticipated this recent seven game winning streak after starting se- or starting two and four. So a lot of this has been a pleasant surprise. And I think one of the things that's been interesting to see, at least in New England, is the reaction to this team because the expectations are not what they were over the course of the Brady era. You know, I, I think a lot of people expected them to improve and maybe fight for a playoff spot this year. But I don't think anyone expected them to be in in the you know this much in the mix for the number one seed at, at this point in the season. That said, now things have kind of shifted a little bit going into these last four games of the regular season. People are now invested, I would say, more emotionally in this team than they maybe were at the start of the season, and and they want them to be able to finish this off. Yeah, it's amazing to think we're talking about the possibility of an eleven game win streak to finish the regular season, but. It has been a surprise. Ultimately, to, to answer your question, it's been a surprise when you know you you consider what they've gone through, as you mentioned, over the last year plus to get to the point that they've gotten to. I, I think a lot of people are really, really happy with where things are right now, but they'd be even more happy if they can continue to you know head in the right direction. Who doesn't like a little extra money? Well, if you're into gambling, Bet Online remains your number one spot for all your basketball, football, baseball, 
NHL, boxing, UFC, even your Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for this season and the next. Head to the new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE50, that's B-L-E-A-V-5-0, to receive your bonus. Bet online, where the game starts. So, we, as I talked about earlier, Colts fan, this is this game is almost a make or, make or break for the for the Colts season. You know, this this game legitimately, it's a conference game. Uh, it, if they lose it, they legitimately could be out of the playoffs. Uh, for the Patriots, and 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 how important is this game for Patriots moving forward? It, it, it's, a, it's a measuring stick game, I think, first and foremost, because it's a playoff worthy team. I also think, too, that, and, you know, we've discussed this in the past, that this game has some juice to it again. It's the Patriots and the Colts. It's Colts week. It's Patriots week. You know, it, that, that means something. And, and then maybe, though, more than anything else, New England knows it needs to keep its foot on the gas. Because the Titans are still behind him. The Titans are getting healthier. Derrick Henry's getting healthier. Uh, You know, I I think everyone in New England understands that that wasn't the complete Titans team that the Patriots, you know, thrashed a couple of weeks ago. So while everyone is optimistic and everyone is feeling happy, these games are are very important to New England if it it ultimately wants to get to where it wants to go. So, you know, it was funny earlier in the earlier in the week, I did a podcast with Levin Reed from WBZ TV here in Boston, and I ranked the games. We ranked the games by overall anxiety level. If you're a Patriots fan, in this one was number one because you had you have four games left. You have the Colts. You, you're home against the Bills, the Jaguars. And I don't think anyone's worried about the Jaguars at this point. Um, and then the, the regular season finale against the Dolphins in you know in Miami. And so I, I think that when you consider those four games and you consider the Patriots positioning in the AFC, this game stands out amongst those four as a must-win game to be able to continue to move in the right direction. Wow. Uh, that That's actually a little bit surprising coming uh, from the Patriots side of you because I've, I've watched – I've watched a lot of football over the years, and in Miami, New England has had a history. Uh, I'm telling you, Lawrence. I, I it's it, and it's we we joked about this, and we continue to joke about this. You never take a late season trip to Miami for granted ever. There was a time in 2004 when they went down there, and they were just rolling over teams, and the Dolphins knocked the Dolphins were like a two win team, and they beat them. Yeah, a couple of years ago, the miracle in Miami. Mm-hmm. It, weird stuff always seems to happen to this team in Miami in December and January. So, you know, you you consider the opponent and the Dolphins are not, you know, I mean, they're still kind of on the fringes of the playoff race. I don't know if they've been officially eliminated as of yet, but I, I don't think the Patriots are taking that one for granted either. But when you stack these games up, you know, the Bills coming into, coming into New England, that's going to be no cakewalk either. So I, I think that there is a, an extraordinary level of, I don't want to say anxiety, but when you look at the last four games, this is the game that Patriots fans, I think, feel maybe the most unsure about. So I'm I'm looking over the uh, injury report now. The Colts they have their their injury is they're the healthiest they've been all season. Uh, I've I've not seen an injury report that looks like this all year. Only four guys on the injury report, and then I scroll down, and I am utterly surprised. Coming off a of bye week, uh, the Patriots have so many starters that are on limited practice. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what can you what can you give me about that? Some of the guys have been working their way back from previous kind of bumps and bruises. Not to minimize any of it, but I, I think the Patriots are in relatively good. And I'll put up my quote fingers here: relatively good mm-hmm. shape when it comes to you know overall injury news situation, whatever you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, the the thing that I think still concerns people a little bit is the state of the the offensive line. They were really banged up at the start of the year, and I think that played a large role in their struggles to start the season, the two and four start of the season. Right tackle Trent Brown went down, and they kind of had to move some guys around, and it was a domino effect, and it impacted Mack and his overall development. But I think really as a whole, you know, you have some guys who are kind of coming in and out of COVID. I know they're very excited to welcome Kyle Duggar back. Uh, they, they are as healthy as they can be at, at this point. Look, everyone's going to be, everyone's dealing with injuries. Everyone's dealing with health issues. But when you look at this Patriots team, 
I, you know, you talk about health. I still can't believe they're doing what they're doing without James White, who went on IR earlier in the year. Um, but I think overall, they are as good as they can be at this stage of the season. Hey, Colts fans. Thanks for watching DeQuell and I here on Believe in Colts. While you're at this, please take a moment to smash the like button, hit subscribe. If you're not subscribed, tag that notification bell so that you are notified next time we upload a video or go live so that you can join in the conversation. Don't forget you can share this stream. That would help us out a ton. If you enjoy this, share it. All you got to do is go right over here and click the share button, little red share button down here underneath, and share it to your favorite social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, wherever, doesn't matter. Thank you so much. On behalf of myself and Dequal Jackson, have a good one. Enjoy the rest of the show. Well, it was a if it was a time for a bye week to get a little bit healthier, this was it. And yeah, and exactly. when I when I saw the bye weeks coming in as, as a Colts fan, looking, I was like, I was used to the Colts having a bye week, week four, week five, week six, you know, mm. for the last few years, and then all of a sudden I'm like, fourteen, that's great, wow, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's perfect timing coming into the playoffs. So uh, same, same with uh, the Patriots. And and I, th I think the one thing here, Lawrence, and, and the a name I forgot to mention, um, particularly to the bye week, Adrian Phillips appeared to suffer an injury in the Buffalo game, and I think if they had to play that next week. I don't think Adrian Phillips would have been able to play given the fact that they had the bye week, had the week off. He's able to get treatment. That's big for, for the Patriots defensive game plan. They really thrive on that three safety set between Duggar and McCourty and Phillips, that grouping back there, they're a little bit thin at cornerback, I think. Um, but those safeties allow them to do a lot of things defensively that maybe they wouldn't necessarily be able to do if those three guys weren't completely healthy. Two guys on your injury report I have to ask questions about. One, uh, now it's not going to affect us whether or not he's playing or probably not even affect how he plays, uh, but Mac Jones suffered a left thumb injury. Uh, yeah. What's, what's going on with that? Yeah, that no one's really sure where that happened, how that came up. He said the other day he was feeling okay. He was wearing a glove at some point, and so that kind of sparked some some questions about, hey, are you trying to cover something up? He's apparently okay. He's apparently good to go. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's certainly something, you know, all of a sudden a glove appears on the hand. You want to ask some questions about it. So it's, I think it's fair game. Uh, Damian Harris uh, was having a, a game against Buffalo and then gets pulled out due to a hamstring. Where's he sitting at right now? Yeah, he's, he's apparently back to, I don't want to say full strength, but he's, you know, he's as healthy as he can be. Harris and Stevenson, the two young running backs, have been up and down in terms of health over the course of the year. And that's one of the reasons why they've had to lean on a veteran like Brandon Bolden from time to time. But it's my understanding that Harris should be okay to go come Saturday night. Awesome. That's, that's great news. Uh, and, I, and I say that because in, in all honesty, I, I want the best players on the field that can possibly be there. I know mm -hmm. a lot of people are like, well, no, give me the weakest team I could possibly have. It guarantees a chance of a, a better chance of a victory. But honestly, you, at this point in in the season, you want a good bar to to make sure that you're a good because you don't want to go into the playoffs and then get blown out by a good team because you know you face teams that didn't have you know were full weren't full health. Uh, also, so the Colts and the Patriots are two of the best at not being penalized uh, in the NFL. Colts having the third least amount of penalties at sixty two. Uh, we're looking at the New England Patriots. They're eighth, only had 73 penalties in the NFL. But one little asterisk here, Carl Cheffers is going to be that guy, going to be that referee, him and his group, second most penalties called in the NFL this season and the most pass interference penalties. Um, th does that Does that give you a little bit of worry? It, it, it does when you're talking about the depth in the Patriots secondary. I, I'm not worried necessarily. JC Jackson's a little bit more of a physical guy. So I think, you know, he might be inclined to draw a few more penalties. But when you 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 go a little deeper in that cornerback depth chart, I, I would be a little bit worried. Um and, and again, this is something we talked about beforehand. Maybe this is the kind of game where a TY Hilton can, you know, make some hay against the New England defense. So I, I do. I, I think the I think the inclusion of Cheffers 
and I heard you guys talk to Zach Kiefer a little bit about this. It, it, it's intriguing because, as you mentioned, you know that crew throws a lot of flags, and we're talking about two of the least penalized teams in the league coming into this one. It's going to be part of the conversation, and I have to imagine that I, I know Bill does it. You know, talks to his team about the officiating tendencies that they're going to see from week to week. I have to believe Frank Reich has done the same thing mm -hmm. with the Colts. That's going to be something to keep an eye on come Saturday night. That makes an awful lot of sense. Absolutely. Another thing that uh, I, I've kind of noticed, the Patriots aren't known for getting big air yards uh, from air you know, uh, point. They get most of their yards to the air on – on uh, yards after catch, right? Mm -hmm. They're a big yak yards team, and I, I'm I'm sitting there looking at uh, matchups here, and I'm like, well, okay, so they want to they want to run the football, and they like to run a lot of screens and things of like that, get get that the yak yards going on. But the Colts are the best team in the NFL at creating turnovers, number one by far on forcing fumbles. And when you like to run the football and do yak yards, that leaves that ball in that position to get knocked out uh, more often. Um, do, do you think that could play a part? I mean, the, the turnovers, is, could that be a big, big yeah. thing in this game? Yeah, look, Bill's teams traditionally have been great when they've won the turnover battle. Look, it's, it's true across the league. I understand mm -hmm. that. But at the same time, when the Patriots have had success over the last 20 years, they've been able to win the turnover battle. And, and ball security is a huge part of this. I'll go back to you know earlier in the season. Harris had a bad fumble in the regular season opener against the Dolphins. Stevenson had some issues with ball security in the preseason and early in the season. They've cleared it up to this point in the year. You figure that into the mix, as well as the fact that Mac, I think, does a very good job taking care of the football. And so you'd like to think if you're a New England fan, you have that area kind of locked down a little bit. You feel a lot better about your ball security issues now than you did, say, six games into the regular season. But facing a team like Indianapolis – that is so good at forcing turnovers, that's so good at taking the ball away. You know, when you look at the points of emphasis for the Patriots offense this week, that is going to be either at the top or near the top. Take care of the football. Don't turn the ball over. Don't give them short fields because the margin for error in this one is considerably slimmer than what we've seen over the last few weeks with New England. This channel is proudly sponsored by the Backroom Collection. They do beautiful sports canvas art with football, basketball, baseball, and other sports themes. Special orders are accepted and autograph pieces are available. Many Indianapolis Colts sign pieces will be available beginning in November. Just use your discount code CL10 to purchase the pieces you want to spice up your living area. That's CL10. Jonathan Taylor, uh, we haven't talked about him yet, um, but uh, point of emphasis on both sides of the field right here uh, leads the league in rushing yards, rushing touchdowns, scrimmage yards, scrimmage touchdowns, just a dynamic running back. Uh, what will be, what do you think will be the focus on how to slow down Jonathan Taylor in this game? You got to throw everything you can at him. And, and I, I think the Patriots are encouraged. We talked about Kyle Duggar a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. I think Kyle Duggar is going to play a big role in, in this when it comes to slowing or trying to slow the Colts running game, bring him down in the box. He gets very physical. He's a very hands-on guy. He's not an, exactly a, you know, a, a deep safety, a cover type. He's going to be the guy who's going to come down there alongside the linebackers and try and do his part when it comes to slowing a guy like Taylor. But look, you know, I, I'm under no illusions that I don't think anyone in New England is under any illusion that they're going to be able to completely contain Jonathan Taylor. I think the goal is to minimize his impact and then, basically have the Colts try to beat you left-handed, you know, and have Carson Wentz try to throw the football and try to, you know, try to spread things out a little bit because, you know, the, the Colts are so good at getting up early and controlling the tempo and imposing their will on the other team and playing, you know, playing with a lead. And, and I think if you're New England, you want to make them play from behind a little bit. You want to make them throw the football a little bit more. You want to make them, you know, take some shots downfield. And that would theoretically play into the, you know, play into the hands of a guy like JC Jackson or Devin McCourty or, or, or someone like that. You want to be able to make them throw the ball to beat you. And that starts with being able to contain that running game. And so I wouldn't be surprised ultimately to answer your question to see eight, nine guys in the box, bring a lot of guys down, bring Duggar down, really 
crowd that line. Be physical with them. You know, you look for big games from guys like Duggar, like I mentioned. Devin Godshaw, who's very, very good at stopping the run. Lawrence Guy, who remains, you know, criminally underrated. One of the more underrated defensive linemen, defensive tackles in the league. And Matthew Judon, who is an absolute game wrecker. He's struggled a little bit when it comes to setting the edge, but he's still part of that mix when it comes to stopping the run as well. What side does... um? Judon generally play on. Uh, He's usually more often than not on the blind side. And the the great thing about him, you're watching film, Lawrence, the red sleeves. And we've joked about it here in New England that, you know, he demands attention on every single snap. And it's easy to find him because he's got those red sleeves. The thing for me about Judon is not so much the on-field production. We've seen it over the course of the year, particularly in the passing game. Like I said, the last couple weeks, he struggled to set the edge a little bit. But in the passing game, He's able to consistently generate pressure on opposing quarterbacks. Then the other thing is, off the field, his transition into the New England system has been so seamless. We saw it the first couple weeks of the season. This is a guy who, and look, it's it's these are small things, but all things together, you know, kind of bigger and, and it, it kind of tells a bigger story. He wore a New England Revolution jersey to the podium one day, you know, to support the local soccer team. You know, he's shown up at the you know the sidelines of Celtics games. He does little things that suggest that he's been here for a long time. He understands the culture. He understands what it takes to be able to get to that next level. So he's only you know he he was one of those off season signings, but he's a guy who feels like he's been in Foxborough for years as opposed to months. So. You, you're talking about, you know, loading the box, having eight guys in the box, bringing a safety down. Jonathan Taylor this year averages more yards per carry against loaded boxes than he does unloaded boxes, mm-hmm. right? I, yep. it's because uh, because of his breakaway speed and ability to break that first tackle, and then he's just gone, right? And you, that's how he gets a lot of those 50, 60-yard runs uh, during that. But also, when you bring a safety down, then you're leaving – McCourty out there single high right yeah. and and and, yeah. and that's a situation where you're like okay so I'm going to have to have man-on-man coverage basically against a Michael Pittman Jr. a T.Y. Hilton and Ashton Doolin a Zach Pascal or the linebacker or, or the the tight ends which the Colts you know very much like the New England we've got some a couple really good tight ends on, on our team um yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm curious. Does does the passing game of Indy have any kind of instill any fear at all, or is it more like we think that we could beat them if 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 Carson Wentz is holding the football? I think that's a gamble that New England is willing to take. Frankly, you know, when you see Taylor and you see the level of production, he's clearly their number one offensive option. And you know, the theory is that Bill, you know, the goal is to take away whatever they do best. And like I said before, make them beat you left-handed, you know, going to, if you're going into a prize fight, you know, you, you, you tie one hand behind the, you know, the other boxers back, you know, your chances are, your chances are good. You're going to come out with a victory at the very least. You know, you're going to be competitive. I think one of the reasons they're willing to take that chance is because Bill believes so much in Devin McCourty and what he's able to do. And also we talked about the safeties before you throw Adrian Phillips into that conversation as well. Devin McCourty is going to go down as one of Bill Belichick's favorite players of all time. He's not necessarily the most talented guy, but McCourty right now is McCourty is a coach on the field in a lot of aspects. He's been around the team since 2010. Nobody on the defensive side of the ball knows that group better. No one knows his teammates better. If I'm a Patriots fan, I still feel pretty good about the fact that it's going to be McCourty out there working as a single high safety while Duggar and maybe Phillips are down in the box trying to slow a guy like Taylor on a more lighthearted note. I, I, I am completely fascinated with how Patriots players can leave the team, go to another team, absolutely play awful, come back to the Patriots and then play as good, if not better than what they were prior. How has that happened? Yeah. And you look at guys like it's, it, this team is full of guys like that. You know, exactly. Kyle Van Noy, you know, Trent Brown, Ted Karras, uh, Jamie Collins. You know, there, yeah. There's a bunch of guys on this roster who've gone, who, who came up with New England or who spent some time in New England, left, had struggles, and then came back to the Patriots. I think Bill is very, very good at 
maximizing a player's strengths and minimizing a player's weaknesses. He's never going to put a player in a position where he's going to look bad. He's never going to put someone in position where they don't have a chance for success. You know, even when you look historically going back to, you know, Troy Brown playing cornerback or Julian Edelman playing cornerback, you know, those are extreme examples to be sure, but he is always going to put that player in the best possible situation. And look, he has enough talent up and down the roster where, you know, he can kind of camouflage some of it from time to time, granted, but but you're never going to see a player in New England out of position asked to do something that they're not completely comfortable in doing, and I think that's part of it. So walking into this game, obviously uh, New England has a very solid offense. The Colts have a very solid defense, but it's really, I think it's the Colts offense versus New England defense that's the biggest thing for me when I'm looking at this because – this is a game that's going to be Frank Reich, who is an excellent guy who's had a week to, uh, you know, plan, just like Belichick has had a week to plan. And Frank Reich is undefeated so far coming off the bye week uh, as a head coach for Indianapolis. Belichick, obviously, his record coming off a of bye week is outstanding as well. And I think this is going to be a game that's going to be decided on the sidelines with the coaches. Right. I, I think yeah. whoever's going to be able to adjust the best. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Be- because, you know, I, I, I'll go back to I'll go back to this before. I'll, you know, I'll kind of use the use the, the boxing analogy because, look, Lucas Oil Stadium is going to be loud on Saturday night. It's going to be tremendous. It's going to be great atmosphere, great environment. It's going to be tremendous energy in the building. The Colts are such a great first quarter team. If I'm the Patriots. I just have to absorb that first punch. And if I feel good at the end of the first quarter, if it's a tie game, if I have a lead, or if the Colts are maybe up by only three or seven, or if it's a one-score game, whatever the case may be, I still feel really good about my chances for a number of reasons. You know, as you mentioned before, Frank Reich is a a great coach when it comes to, for a lot of reasons, not the least of which, in-game adjustments. You look at the Patriots' ability to score in the fourth quarter. They've outscored their opponents in the fourth quarter. Bill's ability to make those in-game adjustments. So look, if I'm New England, I know I'm going to get hit right out of the box with great energy. The Colts players, the Colts fans, it's going to be over the top. If I can absorb that, if I can stay on my feet and I can stay in the game through the first quarter, maybe you know, first quarter plus, I feel good about my chances down the road. So so yeah, so ultimately, really, when you look at this matchup, I agree with you. It's, it's going to be defined by the coaches and it's going to be defined by what the coaches do once the game is underway because we know these two teams are very, very talented on both sides of the ball. It's going to be what the Patriots do to adjust personnel-wise, you know, in, in terms of attack, whatever the case may be, uh, really on, on, on both sides. So, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. This this thing is going to come down to the coaching staffs. And, look, I, you know, I'll guarantee you, it's probably the same with, with, with Frank Reich, They've been. This is one of those games that's circled on the calendar, you know. And, and maybe it's kind of if you're a Patriots fan, you looked at the calendar at the start of the year and said, "Okay, look, the Tampa Bay game, the Dallas game, you know, the Jets still kind of sort of move the needle a little bit." But you know, this is one of those games that that still gets people fired up. And and I think you know we're going to see that on Saturday night. It's just amazing. I'm sitting here looking, you know, at the. St- this is this is kind of you know. Strength versus strength. We got the number one scoring defense in the NFL versus uh, over the last 10 weeks, the number one scoring offense for the entire season. The Colts are the number three scoring offense mm-hmm. in the NFL. So it, something's got to give. I mean, yep. so it, it's going to be a, a great game at 820 on Saturday. Uh, thanks again, Chris, for joining me. Pleasure. Appreciate you. Yeah. Take a moment again and uh, plug yourself a little bit. I thank you very much. Yeah, you can you can follow me on social media. I'm at C Price Loeb on Twitter. That's C Price Globe. You can also read my stuff over at Boston.com and you can listen to the Patriots Report anywhere you get your podcast, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast, go check out the Patriots Report. We got a lot of great content up there, and we have a lot more between now and the end of the regular season, I'll guarantee you. Awesome. Thank you so much. This was Believe in Colts brought to you by Bet Online. And until next time, I'm Lawrence Owen. And as usual, go Colts.